I'm noticing more and more that some articles aren't making it uh, into the mainstream media. The uh, article uh, I shared with Kevin last week with the Wall Street Journal, which was really beautiful, it had the families of some of the victims of Charleston um, forgiving the shooter. And um, very, very powerful thing. And so there's a lot going on there that you're not hearing about. Another thing that happened was uh, the family in the church uh, declined uh, Al Sharpton's offer to come down and speak. Uh, they said that they felt like that that would be divisive and that wasn't what they were looking to do. These folks are showing us how to walk in love. If anybody's watching, they're showing what real Christianity looks like. Come on. Praise God. So we're going we're gonna to add this little section. Um, we're not going away f- from verse by verse, but there's just so much that's going on that we, I want to keep you guys updated. Um, and first of all, let me, you know, when we talk about prophecy, talk about the future, a lot of people think, oh, the book of Revelation. Oh, oh, there's just no way that I'll understand that. Well, Honestly, it's not the parts that you don't understand that bother you about the book of Revelation. It's the parts that you do understand, you know? So, but there's more to prophecy than that. Now, a couple chapters that I'd recommend to you are Matthew 24 and Ezekiel 38 and 39. But what we talk about here is, you know, chapter by chapter context. And so some people suggest those chapters. I'm gonna suggest some additional chapters. Because Jesus keeps going in Matthew 24 into chapter 25. And he's also discussing end times scenarios. It's interesting. He goes into the parable of the virgins. Those who had oil, those who didn't. And then he goes into the parable of talents. Which is very intriguing. Where he gives talents five and two and one to three different people. The guy who got five traded and doubled He traded and invested what God had blessed him with. The guy with two did the same thing. The guy with one just kind of didn't do anything with it. And so the master comes back and he congratulates the one who doubled his talents, uh, his money. He congratulates one that doubled it too. He rebukes the one because he didn't use the resources that God had given him. And then um, then, uh, Jesus goes into the final plea And then Matthew 26 leads into the crucifixion. Ezekiel 38 and 39 paint the picture of Armageddon, which every nation lines up against Israel. Now, historically, that couldn't happen because we were standing with Israel. But while we are still standing with Israel, apparently Washington, not so much. And they're sending out signals that Netanyahu is understanding, but sadly, other people who are against Israel also are understanding. It's interesting, it was a couple weeks ago that I prayerfully decided to start doing this. And think about the headlines just in the couple last weeks of the nine killed in church shooting. And of course yesterday, The federal government prevents states from prohibiting gay marriage or benefits. And the federal government decided that prohibiting gay marriage is illegal and everyone can get benefits. That's what happened yesterday. The Supreme Court decided that. It's interesting also with that, uh, Houston's gay mayor has demanded copies of pastors' sermons to look for hate speech. These are interesting times, friends. Let me share a passage with you. This may be a passage you mark down because you may want to share this with others. Matthew 19, verse 4. And this is Jesus speaking. If you got a red letter Bible, these letters would be in red. And he answered and said to them, Have you not read? Let's stop there. I want you to notice that Jesus is assuming that they've read the Bible here. We may want to 
take that into consideration because I can certainly see us going to heaven and God saying, did you read this? Did you not read this? Didn't you read this? And friend, if you've not read the whole Bible, please get, 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 get going, man. Get going. And, um, and once you've read it through, read it again because you'll get more the second time. And then when you get there, read again the third time. You'll get even more out of it. Because we don't want to get to the end of this life and, you know, get up there and, well, did you, did you read the book of Amos? Oh, you know, book of Amos. Yeah, I read that one. I did. I, that was one of my favorites, actually. Or you're going to stand there and go, well, no, I didn't. I, I, just, I, just, I, I, I didn't have time. You didn't have time? I gave you 84 years and you couldn't read one book? You read Gone with the Wind seven times in the whole Left Behind series, but you couldn't read the Bible. Mm. Have you not read that he who made them at the beginning made them male and female? This is the words of Jesus, somehow predicting what our end time problems would be, isn't it? And said, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So then they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let not man separate. Have you not read? God created a man and woman, husband and wife. The Supreme Court didn't define marriage, so that's not up to them to redefine it. And they can change laws, but they can't change our hearts, and they can't change our minds, and they can't make us wrong when we know that we're right. And they can't shut our Bibles, and they can't shut our mouths, and they cannot make Jesus go back into the tomb. And they can't make Jesus go back into the tomb. The tomb is empty. Jesus is alive forevermore. Amen? Praise God. Mm. Now, it's interesting things that we're not hearing. Are you aware that Russia is making nuclear threats in Europe? Russia ambassador threatening that Denmark will be a nuclear target. In an interview in the Danish newspaper, the Russian ambassador to Denmark, Mikhail Vannin, said he did not think Danes fully understood the consequences of joining the NATO missile defense system. That Denmark is being invited to join this defense system because Europe is, they're afraid that Iran is going to bomb Europe. And Russia's coming out against that, and they've threatened Dane. They said this, if that happens, Danish warships will be the targets for, a Rush, for Russian nuclear missiles. Vainan told the newspaper. Other headlines, in April in Kenya, 147 dead and 79 wounded when Al-Shabaab, Islamic group, targeted Christians. Egyptian authorities arrested five Christian children for blasphemy of Islam. Here's an interesting one. Chinese military hackers who hit the Office of Personnel Management hacked all government employees' weaknesses, problems, addictions, marital issues, and all clearance forms the government uses. There was a hack of, I think a latest number, four million government employees that the OPM who manages all government employees, they got hacked, but what they have in those servers is federal employees have to fill out forms and when they get security clearances, they have to tell if they've ever had a marriage, marriage problem, alcohol problem, drug problem. The Chinese military now has those forms. Not only that, but they have all the clearance forms into different areas and secured areas for secure information. The hackers have all of those forms. Iran told Syria to attack Israel on the Golan Heights. This is Iran that we're making a deal with. Friday alone, this is just Friday, in Tun Tunisia, a man hit on the beach and shot and killed 37 tourists, including Europeans. He was Islamic. In Kuwait, an Islamic homicide bomber not suicide bomber. If you're committing suicide, you go out in the field by yourself and you commit suicide. When you take a bomb in the midst of women and children, you're a coward and that's homicide. That's not suicide. Amen. Amen. 
So this homicide bomber killed 27 people. In Somalia, Al-Shabaab militants killed at least 25 in Nairobi, Kenya, attacking the African Union base. In France, an American-owned company was attacked when an Islamic decapitated his boss, hung his head on the fence with Islamic flags. That's Friday. That's all those attacks, three different continents, one day. Let me share this with you, though. Luke 21, verse 25. And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's heart failing them from fear. Men's hearts failing them for fear. Number one cause of death now, I think, is heart disease among men. And the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now, when these things begin to happen, look up. It doesn't say bum out. It doesn't say be anxious. It doesn't say be depressed. It says look up. And lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. Amen. And let me praise God. And let me let me give you another couple of verses. Second Timothy 1, 6 and 7. Therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Or in the New Living Translation, this is why I remind you to fan into flames the spiritual gift God gave you when I laid my hands on you. For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. Praise God. So no fear, not fear. Not fear, don't have fear. God's got this, God predicted it. Part of the prophetic is letting us know he's got it. He's got it. I would encourage you to read Psalm 91. Especially as you, you know, if you're, if you're a news watcher, after you watch the news, read Psalm 91, okay? Because it kind of help you. Psalm 91 talks about God looking after us. It talks about angels being, being uh, dispatched to watch out over us. Let me encourage you to be praying, you know, and pray. Pray that angels would be dispatched. That's biblical. That's scriptural. Well, it's just a little weird. It's more than just a little weird. It's very weird, but it's supernatural, so pray. Look, do you, okay, would you rather be a little weird with angels protecting you and your family or not be weird and have unemployed angels sitting back there not knowing what to do? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep my angels busy, praise God. Amen. And even so, Lord Jesus, come. Maranatha. Maranatha. That's a Greek word meaning even so, come. That's what we're talking about when we look forward to these things. So as I bring these little bits to you, don't be fearful. Be excited. It's confirming what the Bible's predicted hundreds of years ago. Amen.